Okay, welcome to part two of the uh, Sugar Cube by Sweet Vinyl. Um, before I get into part two, which I'll talk about recording and a little bit about software, I do want to say in part one, I really failed to say um, I really enjoy this uh, product. Um, there are a few little glitches here and there, but I really get enjoyment out of it. Uh, some people might ask, um, why don't you just have CDs? You know, if you want to have your music burn digitally, um, for me, I, I like to be immersed in music and that's where I, I get it from listening to records. Um, but I have a lot of records that I really, um, want to listen to in another format. Like if I'm at home in my office, which is the same room that my stereo is in, um, sometimes I'm working and I just want background music and I, you know, uh, it's not the same as it is with vinyl. With vinyl, I'm looking directly at the stereo and I'm really immersed in it. Plus, I like to take my music on the road. Um, and you can't do that uh, very well with a record. So anyways, um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and use this Foreigner uh, record. Um, the record itself is a, uh original master recording. It's a very fine pressing, so um, there's not going to be a lot of clicks and pops on this. Um, I definitely will engage the sugar cube, though, because I'm going to record it. And uh, I'll keep it probably at a level two, but I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, for now, um, what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and get over here and I'll get the sugar cube. Um, I'll go ahead and start up my turntable. And then I'll go ahead and uh, put the stylus on it. Give me one second. Now I'm not going to have the music crank because I don't need to do this in order to um record so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this down but then i'm going to go ahead and press um the record button right here right now you can see there's another way to do this but i'm just going to show you i typically do everything from the actual device uh, when i'm starting it um, when i'm adjusting the the levels, I usually do that. Right now I'm setting it to level two. I usually do that from my computer. Um, but it, you can very well do it right here. It's easy. There's also a USB slot here um, that I never use. Um, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, the device itself has the ability to connect Wi-Fi and also hardwired. I have mine connected directly to an Ethernet. Um, and then um, when I record... Um, when it's done, it sends it to the computer and I'll show you about that in a second, but let me go ahead and like I said, this is set at level two. I'm going to move this over out of the way. And all, all I'm going to do when I put this down is press the record button. It's a little red button. Just press the record button. As you can see, it's a red button right there and it's recording. It says it right there. So I'm gonna move over to my computer and show you something else. Okay, so I'm now over at my computer. Um, this is the actual uh, Sugar Cube software. Here is the record. You can hear it playing in the background. I'm going to go ahead and mute that. It's still recording though. As you can tell, right here it says that it's recording in progress. When I press the record button there, or I could press it up here. Right now it says stop recording, but I could start a recording from here. But I just prefer to do it by where my turntable is. So when you once you press that, it gives you the option to input information. This says select, use last, not now. I could say not now, and I can just enter in the information myself from this record. Or um, 
you use use last if you had already put information in. So in this case, I'm actually going to enter the catalog number on this and uh, and see what comes up. So, and believe it or not, it works quite well. Um, most of the time it finds what, it, except for some extreme like heavy metal, sometimes it doesn't find that. So I'm entering this catalog number. I put a dash in there. It's kind of hard to work with the camera right here, but I'm going to select it and see it comes up. It shows up as Foreigner, that version, and then it shows up some other ones, but I know that this is the one. I'm going to hit select. When I hit select, it's bringing up the information now. Now there, you can see it even brought the artwork up. I can go in here. Um, one thing I will say is you can't, you don't want to do too much stuff at one time with this um, because the sugar cube can be a little temperamental at times. I've noticed that on a few things, but uh, you know, once I got used to some of the little uh, quirks, I'm totally good with it. So what I'm doing is I'm recording it right now. Um, I can select this. I can hit, or I can hit edit, and I can go in here, and then hit, over here, I can hit album information, and I can change whatever I want in here, like if I want to change the genre or something like that, I could do that. These are some of the other features I don't use, like track breaks. Um, I don't, I don't use their software to break up my tracks. In fact, down here, it has... There's a red dot because I don't have track format set up. I could. I could record both side format, which is green. That's what I'm doing. I'm recording one side at a time. Or I could record track format. And it gives you the sensitivities, you know, what type of format you want. Do you want FLAC, Wave, MP3? Um, you know, what your sample rate is and your sample side. Do you want it 24-bit, 96 uh, kilohertz? So for me... On the side format, I have it set up that way. So what's going to happen is um, when this side is done, I will hit stop recording um, when the side's over. And then I'll show you what I do at that point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, the recording from the actual device. Damage is done. So the recording stopped. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip the record and then I'll show you what it uh, displays on the screen. So before I go ahead and start the record on side two, I just want to note that over here, there is a feature on the software where you can press start uh, a new recording. But I'm going to go ahead and do that from the actual SugarCube itself. Okay, so, as you can probably tell, I went ahead and I pressed the record button over on the device itself. And what we get is, now it says recording in progress, and you get the same pop-up window that we got the last time. Now, I could either enter the information again, especially if it was a brand new record. Um, or I could say not now, but I'm going to say use last. And then what it does is it knows that I was already recording this Foreigner album. And by the way, this Foreigner album, their first album, is uh, there is not one single track 
that's filler on this thing. It's an amazing album, and I'm a heavy metal guy, so... Um, anyway, so I'm going to enter side two here. I'm going to hit select. It's going to take a minute to process. That's side one there. It knows it's recording side two. But it's, you know, give it a second and it'll bring up the artwork and everything like that. Now it says side two. It's got the artwork. If I click edit, it shows me both, side one and side two. Um, still showing that the recording's in, uh, in uh, pro uh, progress. It says here that this recorded about a minute ago in progress and this says about an hour ago because I took a break and had dinner anyways the the artwork also there's a display window on the actual sugar cube device I tried to take a picture of it but because of the glare it's hard to get but the actual artwork does show up on the sugar cube as long as you use their catalog lookup um, piece so anyways when this is done recording I'm gonna come back and we'll finalize uh, some other features at that point Okay, so side two just finished recording, and I'm going to go over just a couple quick things here about uh, the software, because um, part three will contain more information about the software. So, obviously you don't want to hit clear recording storage area until you're totally done with everything, um, but what it shows you here, you have edit, album information, track breaks, trim track, save, side format track format and status right now i'm going to go to save and it's going to give me it gives me one option right now because this one's still processing it's updating so if i check this box right here and i go to save status what it will do it will start to the process now if you if this is if if side two was done and the checkbox is there you could say select all, or you could check them both. I highly advise against that. That's one of the glitches that I have run across with this. Um, the when I it, it tends to overload when you do that. So I'm going to go back to save. I'm just going to hit this one. I'm going to hit save status. And now you can either save USB storage. And it says right here, no USB storage detected. It's because I'm not using one or download to this device. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna hit start transfer. And what it's gonna do, it's processing the recording for saving and it's transferring it over to my computer at this point. Um, again, I'm connected directly. I am not connected wirelessly. Once this completes, um, it will then give me a link to download and I will click download. It'll save it as a zip file to my download folder. And then I'll go in and I'll go back to save. And I'll hit the second option. See, right now it's not there yet because it's still updating. But once, once it's there, this one's flashing right now because it says it's in progress. Okay. But uh, once it gets done, again, I'll save it. Then I'll go back to save. And then I'll download, I'll download that one. It'll go through the same process. And then I'll go ahead and I'll click that link. And then I'll have side one and side two as download links. And then at that point, what I'll do is I'll break them up into separate tracks. You, I believe you can use this software for that. But I have, uh, I've had some issues with, uh, I recorded one using the, uh, the track format. I recorded two records, and each time it recognized the record and it separated the tracks. It did, but it depends on, like, when I put the stylus on the record, the song finished, but before the song, before it, it separated the track, it had already started track two. So track two was actually in track one. I'm sure there's a way to actually fix that in this software, but I find it easier just to use... a uh, uh, an external software program for that. And I will be using that um, software to show you all how to break up tracks in part three.